Hi there, and welcome to the first in a series of tutorials on Unraid. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to install OSX in KVM on Unraid, and I'll be showing you how to do that in both CBIOS and OVMF. In this part one, we're going to be tackling CBIOS. Cracky. Um, firstly, you're going to need to download the file in the description um, onto your desktop, which is this file here. Um, unzip the file. And you're also going to need an OSX install image. Um, I already have mine in a share and a software, operating systems, Mac. Um, and as you can see it's here um, what I suggest you do is go into the unzipped folder and this here is the bootloader which we're going to need to be able to install the system and to boot the system as um, OSX expects to see an Apple EFI partition so we're just going to copy that into the same location as the install image uh, and we can close this down and um, now we need to go to our unraid click on vms and scroll down and as you can see here these are all the templates that come with unraid there's no osx template so we're going to have to make our own um, what we're going to do we're going to click on the ubuntu one um, obviously we're not going to use this but we're going to use this in order to just get the path names of a virtual disk and of the install media and the bootloader so all we need to do is give this a name I'm going to call mine OSX Clover EFI install um, and this will automatically make a location as you can see here um, under mount user virtual systems and then OSX Clover EFI install and then my virtual disk there um, I'm only going to make my virtual disk small as I've already got a few versions of OSX and now we need to open a text file and copy this location here as so we're going to need it later and put that there we'll make it a plain text file so you can read it and this disk image and we're going to click on the install ISO part and that will take us to the install so long as you put it in the right place and copy that and put that in the text file that disk installer and we're going to paste this one more time but delete off the name of the install and if you remember we copied this file over into the same location as our install folder so we need to just put here boot r2839 and so now we have the location of our virtual disk image we have the location of our install media and we have the location of our boot media 
So we can close that and go back to our virtual machine. Like I said, I've given mine 30 gigs, but you could have given your virtual disk anything you like. And we need to untick the start VM after creation, because we don't want it to start. And we need to just click on to create. Now creating that will have just created the virtual disk for us. So now we want to scroll down and you can see here I've got my OSX Clover EFI install. And I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go to edit XML. And all of this here needs to be deleted out. There we delete that and then just minimize the page. We need to go back into our folder here and in here you'll see a file called OSX XML file 1. Open that file and select all of the text. Make sure you've got all of it and copy that. Now go back to our template. So we just paste in the XML and scroll to the top. Um, as you can see, it's got a different name now, but that doesn't matter. Um, but scroll down. Um, the first edit we're going to have to make is here. Um, I've put everything in hashtags where you have to make an edit, the line below. Um, when you click update here, all of these edited out lines will disappear, so don't worry that they're there. Um, and the first bit here you see we need to put our path to our bootloader. So we just need to bring back up our text file and copy this here. And we need to put that into the correct place. And so now we have the correct location for the bootloader. And if we scroll down, we come to our second edit here. And again, we need the path and the path to our virtual hard disk. So we just bring up our text file again. And at the top here, is the path to the virtual hard disk. And we need to just paste that into there. And just scroll down a bit more. And here we come to where we have to enter our OSK key. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you that and show you what it is, but um, if you don't know about the OSK key or what it is or how to get it, then please watch my other video about reading the OSK key. Um, and anyway, you would basically paste that into there. Um, and then the last edit we're gonna have to do is the location of the install media. So again, we go back to our text file and copy the location of the install media. There are our four edits done. Like I said, obviously you would have put in your LSK key and press update. And then we see our LSX C bias there. Click on it, click on start and click on VNC remote. Now you see it's booted into the bootloader and it gives us the option to install OSX Al Capitan. Um, we can't do that straight away. We need to put in a command here. So if we just minimize the screen, go back into our folder here and here you will see XML edits for OSX and that is the command you need to type in. The command is also in the description 
So, just basically type that in. So, once that's typed in, press enter. And we just wait a moment and we should start to boot. Okay, this part will take a little bit of time, so I've speeded up the video a bit here. But while this part's loading, I'd recommend, if you're not already in full screen, putting the VNC on full screen, because you'll find once it gets into the welcome screen, the um, mouse cursor doesn't work very well. And you'll find the only way to really get it to work is by using swift motions with the mouse, and the mouse will kind of move around a bit better like that. Anyway, we're here at the welcome screen, so basically this is where you choose your language. Most of us will probably be choosing English, but if you're not English, then pick your language. Okay, now we have to very difficultly manage to get the mouse up to the top where it says utilities, and then click on to disk utility. And then here we have to format our virtual disk. So we need to move the mouse down onto QMU hard drive at the bottom. And then we need to move the mouse up to arrays. And we're going to name the hard disk OSX. Leave the format as OSX extended journaled. And everything else is default. And then click on to arrays. Now having formatted the hard drive, you can now click done and then close the disk utility. And then click on continue and click continue again and then agree. And here's where we choose which hard drive as there's only one. We choose OS X and then if we can get the mouse to move down, click on continue. And now we'll begin to install the operating system. It says it's going to take about 17 minutes, but I find it takes probably about half of that. But I guess that will depend on your hardware. Um, anyway, we'll skip through to when it's installed. And so here we're almost installed now, just about a minute remaining. And um, we'll find that the OSX will restart itself and we'll come back to the bootloader screen. And now you can see. We've got three options here and we want to boot from this time the OSX. So again the same as before we need to type in the same boot command so just type that in and then when you've done that just press enter. And the operating system will start to boot. And then when you get to this bit, it's just the last few bits of configuration. It's all pretty straightforward, such as putting in your location, um, whether you want location services, your type of keyboard, etc. So just follow that through. Don't put in your Apple ID at this time. And just agree to everything that it asks you to agree to. Set up your account, choose a password if you want one. And click on continue. And this bit can be a bit tricky moving the mouse around. And now we're here at the desktop, I um, just need to test what type of keyboard we have and we should have a fully working Mac. Click on Safari, I'm going to type in a car, do an internet search, everything seems to be good. So close Safari. And now we've just got a couple of things left to do, so we'll minimise the virtual machine and come to our desktop. And when here we need to open a network share on the server. I've got one called test and then we copy our folder um, which we downloaded from the description um, into our network share and when that's finished copying across we can go back to our virtual machine and then go up to the top click on to go and then connect to server and here we type in smb colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address of the server mine is 192.168.1.199 
And then when connected, put in our username and password of the share. Click on to connect. And then you can see the share there. Mine's called test. Open it up and there's our folder we just copied across in the last step. Drag that and place it onto the desktop of the virtual machine. And then now we have our file from the description on the virtual machine. So if you open up the folder, inside this folder you'll find a file called Splashtop Streamer. And for those of you who don't know what Splashtop Streamer is, in my opinion it's one of the best RDP clients. Um, and if we install this, obviously we're not going to have the terrible problem with the VNC mouse. Now obviously you are going to need to have um, Splashtop um, desktop on your laptop or whatever you connect your virtual machines with. Um, so you have to install that first. And when you install Splashtop desktop, you'll create um, an email address with password um, for the account, which you'll need to put in on the um, streamer on the Apple Mac. It just goes in here, so you'd enter your email and password. Um, I'm going to skip past the bit where I put mine in. You can close VNC after doing this and then open your Splashtop desktop. Then find your virtual machine and click on it to start the streamer. And there we have it. Um, as you can see, the mouse is working absolutely perfectly. Um, there's no problem there and we can navigate the desktop, open web pages, that kind of thing. Absolutely fine. So now we have a fully working virtual machine. So after having got your keyboard and mouse working properly, um, just click on to Finder, then go to Preferences, um, Show Hard Disks and Show Connected Servers. I always find useful myself. Um, go to your system preferences and go to energy saver and there's no point putting a virtual machine to sleep as it will save absolutely no power whatsoever as the host is always on anyway so I recommend turning all of these off um, myself I don't really care about signing in I've got nothing on the computer I don't want people to see so Let's click on to login options and I put automatic login on. Password in again. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need to do is go into our folder again and we'll have a folder called extra. Just unzip that folder and we're just going to copy that folder and we're going to put it into the root of the hard drive here okay and now it's time to shut down the virtual machine so click on shut down and when the virtual machine shut down go to your XML scroll down to the bottom and now we need to remove the DVD drive from the virtual machine as obviously we don't need to be doing any more installing of the operating system. So delete those four lines there, um, click on update and then there we have it. We have got a fully working CBIOS virtual machine. Now if you want to convert this um, CBIOS machine to an OVMF machine then please watch the next video. So, there you have it. It really is that simple. Anyway, if you like this video and found it useful, please, I'd really appreciate you giving me a like. And if you want to see more videos from me, then please subscribe to the channel. And anyway, whatever you're up to, please have a good day.